So it's time for the Percherons to go home. And I recorded this video the day before they left. They left the following morning. And I wanted you to see where they were at when they left. And also so the owner could see what I was doing with them. The, I call the two Percherons Black Percheron and Gray Percheron because they was one of each color. This is Black Percheron. I have been saddling them up, bringing them out here in the covered arena, and just stepping right off. And they have not been giving me any trouble at all. They've been pretty, pretty nice. Uh, this one uh, is pretty nice to steer. Really, as far as steering around, I don't have to pull any harder than I would any other young horse. Uh, they are three years old, and at what you're seeing right here is uh, basically 60 days under saddle. And uh, they're, they're, this one has turned out to be pretty nice. We'll talk about the gray in just a minute. So always, any horse, when I first get on, I'm going to kind of steer around to the left, steer around to the right. I want to make sure the horse knows that I control speed and direction. So you see me, I'm kind of tapping on here. I want to make sure that I can put this horse where I want to go at the speed I want to go in. So I walked her around a little bit and pretty quick started asking her to try it. She kind of has a tendency to break back down to a walk when I go to steer her. So I'm asking her to trot and steer and keep going. And she, she's pretty nice. I ride her without any spurs and I do kind of kick on her a little bit with my bare heels. And I also use my rein uh, to tap her in the hip to get a little bit of forward. You see right there as we I steer and she kind of breaks down to a walk. We're going to get that going better here in just a minute. It's kind of like uh, getting a big rock rolling downhill. It takes a little bit to get her going. There we go. But she has been very nice. She has not uh, offered to bug, hasn't kicked out at the rain. And uh, real doing pretty nice. I've been kind of warming her up in the arena here. And then pretty quick taking her out uh, for a trail ride. And you'll see that here in just a minute. Uh, she has gotten pretty nice. Steering's pretty nice. Speed control's pretty nice. And it's turned out to be a pretty nice horse. She needs a little bit more go. But I can handle that. I'd rather too much stop than too much go. Now we're going to walk up to this gate and I'm going to open this gate off of her and uh, we'll go for a ride out back. She's uh, not what I would call handy, like a uh, ranch horse working on a ranch handy, but uh, I can get it done. I can get her where I want her to go. Kind of a long reach down there to get to the gate latch, but uh, I can get her in the right place. She'll let me open the gate and uh, not too bad. I was I'm pretty proud of where this horse has ended up. She's uh, turned out to be a pretty nice horse. Now we're going to take a walk down the alley. And I'm just going to ride her out back just a little bit just so you can kind of see how she does. She is a little bit timid uh, going out. She could use some more miles, but she doesn't do anything bad. Her and the other mare both came at the same time. And this is the more recessive of the two. The other mare dominates this one. And this one is kind of recessive. This one is kind of used to being told what to do. So I have to kind of maintain that when I'm in the saddle. And really be in charge. She never really does anything bad. She just doesn't have any self-confidence. Because her whole life she's kind of drawn off of confidence from the other horse. So I have to fill that space when I'm in the saddle. So we're just going to walk down here just a little ways and uh, turn around and come back. I just want to like to get her out of the arena. She's out here. She's walking towards this gate. There's tapes on the side. She's walking to the cows. So there's a lot out here for her to worry about. But uh, I stay in charge and she handles it pretty good. And I think this is going to make a, a pretty nice uh, trail horse. You see right there, she kind of hesitated and I pushed her on forward and she went. Now we're going to Turn around here and come back. I want to make sure that I maintain control as I'm turning around here. I don't want her to kind of hustle back or rush back to the barn. We want to be in control 
and just kind of head back. And you see, I don't. I, I have just a plain loose rings knife of honor, nothing special, and a fairly loose rein. This uh, this this horse has turned out to be a pretty nice horse. I think she's going to be a nice trail horse. She does need more miles on her still. Uh, she needs to go someplace, get some miles, and I think she's going to end up making a pretty nice trail horse. Uh, we're not rushing back to the barn, and uh, I kind of I, I like this one of, of the two. I, I prefer this one. The other one has a little bit of better gait. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but I like this one's mind a little bit. The other one's a little bit more dominant, and we're going to talk about that in when I show you the video of that one here in just a minute. So this is the other Percheron, this is the gray one, and this was a this one is actually a fair bit taller than the other one. Uh, they are both three years old, but uh, I, I have never measured them, but this one is, I bet, three or four inches taller than the other one, close, close to a whole hand, just be my guess. The other one is a little bit stockier than this one, where this one is a little bit taller. Now, I wish she would have stood still better for me to get on. And as long as she's moving, I'm not going to swing my leg over. I'm going to wait for her to get still. And when she gets still, then I'll swing my leg over. The last thing I want is for her to be moving when I swing my leg over. And that throw me off balance and I sit down hard. And then I'm not in a good position if she was to bolt or buck or whatever. So I'm going to stay right there, standing in the saddle. I'll try to keep my weight centered over the saddle as best as I can and wait for her to get still and then i'll swing my leg over so this this percheron this is the more dominant of the two this one uh, always wants to be in charge wants to do her thing and a as i'm riding here it it's it's obvious you'll see it her ears stay locked forward more she wants to go where she wants to go and a little bit fussier about when i tell her to do something uh, neither one of these have really bucked or given me any trouble in that manner, but I don't, I don't think the other one would buck. I would not be surprised if this one did at some point, just to kind of throw a temper tantrum about not getting her way. I don't think the other one would do that. This one, I'm not so sure. But as you see, I kind of pulled her head back and forth, got, got, uh, let her know I control speed and direction, and then we're just walking just a little bit, get her feet moving, and, and get her head turning my way you see she's wanting to go where she wants to go and this is the thing with her i wish i had my heavy snaffle bit uh that would fit this horse i mean i have it but it's nowhere near big enough to fit this horse that's really what she needs uh, a heavier loose ring snaffle and that's going to help her steer and that's going to more encourage her to follow the bit where right now she just kind of follows her face and uh, this is the one that, that, if you saw the earlier videos, she just drug me all over this arena when we were doing groundwork. I'll uh, try to put a clip to that here. It was kind of, kind of ridiculous. And right there, she's wanting to fuss and get her own way. She don't want to be told what to do. So I kind of got her head, and, and now we're going to go on. Right there, I'm fussing at her just a little bit. And I'm going to do that with her, with a dominant horse. I'm going to pull her head around and say, hey, I'm in charge. We're going to do what I say. I wouldn't do that with the other one because the other one wants me to be in charge. There's no reason to pull on the other one and fuss at it because it's not trying to take charge. The other one wants to be told what to do. This one doesn't want to be told what to do. So I'm going to be a little more aggressive, a little more assertive with this one. And let her know that, hey, I'm, I'm in charge. We're doing things my way. And watch her ears this whole time. Her ears are staying locked forward the whole time. And I still haven't won this battle. She still thinks she's in charge and doing her own thing. She hasn't turned an ear back and listened to me yet. So we're still going to kind of pull her around and kick her around and see, what, uh, see if I can get her mind more on me. This has been the issue with this one all along. You'll, you'll see in a minute it does get better. But I, I have to be pretty in charge. Uh, 
she has not done anything worse than what you saw just a minute ago. Uh, I don't know that she would. Typically, Percherons don't buck normally. They, <laughs> The ones I've had, I'm not sure they could if they wanted to. Now I'm starting to get a little bit of a walk. Her ears are getting softer, but they're still not coming back on me. But we're, we're kind of coming to an agreement. Kind of like the, the saying, you can tell a gelding and you negotiate with a mare, but this is definitely a mare you have to negotiate with. Have to let her know that we've got to come to an agreement. It can't be all about her. I have to be included in the conversation. So I'm just I'm pulling her around, letting her know I'm in charge. That's really all this is. She just had the, she has the same bit I rode the other one in. It's just a, a loose ring snaffle, uh, smooth mouth, nothing special about it. So even when I'm pulling kind of quick and hard on her mouth, she's really not feeling that much. Uh, the, this horse is very resistant. I say very resistant. I have to pull a lot harder with this horse than the other one. The black one, it's no harder than steering any other horse around. This one actually takes a little bit of muscle. And as you see there, a little bit of muscle and a little bit of leg kind of kicking her around. But we're going to get going here in just a minute. And, and she's actually, this is the nicer moving of the two. If she just gets a little bit more willing, which she should, get some miles on her. She'll get a little bit more willing. Uh, this, was, this is probably going to end up the better of the two horses in the end. As I'm walking around on her, I'm still trying to get her ears a little bit better locking on me, a little bit more agreeable to do what I ask her to do. Kind of pulling there and kicking. She just she just ignores me. So we're kind of pulling her around, kicking her around. I'll be trotting her in just a minute and trying to get her mind a little bit more under agreeing that I'm the one controlling speed and direction. The other one really wasn't that hard. Uh, she wants to be told what to do. This one don't want to be told what to do, so I have to be a little bit more assertive with her. And this one ends up coming around. She she just a little bit more work. And like I said, I really think this is going to end up being the better of the two in the end. See, this one just needs a little bit more, be a little bit more agreeable about being told what to do. I think this one is a little bit more athletic. And I think this one has a little bit more initiative. Um, she'll, she'll tell me no for a long time. And uh, it, I know that sounds sounds like a negative thing, but I look at that as a positive thing. That means she, she, she will work for a long time if I get her going in my direction. And I, I think this horse is capable of that. So it's just a matter of getting her agreeable to doing what's asked of her. So... I'm still walking around, pulling around, and the whole time I'm doing this, watch her ears. I mean, she she's starting to flick them back on me just a little bit, and that's why I give her these hard pulls. I try to ask soft, little touches to get the ear back on me. There, there's a couple right there where the ear came back, and but when I ask soft and the ear don't come back, I'm going to go ahead and pull pretty hard. That goes back to the same ask tell demand that I've talked to talked about in the past. So now I've got the rain in my hand. We're going to see if we can get a little bit of a trot going. She naturally just kind of goes off where she wants to go, but we're, we're going to get it going here in just a second. Turn around and let's see if we can get some go again. thought she was going to try on my kick right there but uh she didn't and, and after i kind of spank her a couple times with the rain to get her to trot with spanking her with the rain she will start to trot with just my kick but it, it goes back to everything else she just has to know that i'm in charge and i'm going to make her that, that's really the whole thing with this horse and she just she's better she's a lot better she's not, she's not dragging me around the arena and uh, somewhat going where I point her. So that's a whole lot better than it was. And just got to get a little bit more go here. I could have edited 
some of this out, make it look like she was better than she is, but she, you, you need to see what I got right here. You need to see that um, I'm kind of, I want to be in charge, but I also want her to go when I ask her to go. See, she's taking a few faster steps there. She knows what I'm asking for. She knows she's supposed to go faster. There we go. And reward her with a walk. She knows what I'm asking for. She just really, she just don't want to be told what to do. So she needs more work on that, but I think it's going to come, and I think this is going to end up being a being a pretty nice horse. Let's get a little bit more trot here. Let's see if we get a little more trot here anyways. Well, not this time. Turn her around. I'm intentionally turning her towards the wall instead of away from the wall because I want to make sure that she's bringing her head around, and that's going to help keep her back end engaged for a oh, transition into a trot. I need her to push with the back end. So by turning her into the wall, that helps with the back end being engaged. There we go. And the other thing is like that little thing like her tipping her nose, that just gives me just that little bit into her mind. See how much easier she was to trot off right there? That's the little mind game of turning her into the wall. Turned her in the wall, she bumped her nose, and then after that, she's like, oh, okay, I better try it. I don't want to bump my nose again. Just mind games, little bitty things like that that we can just keep building on and keep going. Thought she was going to try it off on my kick there. Took a little bit of a slap with the rain. That's getting better, though. But you see, that this to me, this is a better moving horse. She moves forward better. And she actually uses her back end a lot better than the other one. She keeps it under a little bit better, not quite as strung out. So as far as moving, how she moves, kind of like this one a little bit better. Now we're getting a little bit more forward. Turn, and let's trot back the other way. There we go. I have not taken this one out of my arena I really don't trust uh, what she would do when I take her out to pasture just yet. Uh, I wish, I wish she would have had a better steer because th this one, this one needs to go out. But in my situation, I really don't have a place where I could take her out here. What she needs to do is go out on the dirt road and just get to the point where she just goes until the point where she wants to listen. Now we're getting a little bit of go going. Now she's listening to my legs a little bit better. Much nicer here. Coming to an agreement. Ears are a lot softer. A little bit more go. <laughs> I, I'm sitting here ticking to try to get her go. There we go. Much, much nicer. She's really interested in that horse over there next to us. Don't remember what horse that is. I think that's Ringo. He's, uh, he's always interested in whatever's going on. So the black Percheron has a pretty nice stop. Pretty much just as soon as I make contact with her mouth, she comes to a stop. Uh, pretty nice. This one, kind of just like everything else, she's going to tell me no first to do her own thing first. So I ask her to stop, and she just kind of pushes through. But what, what I do with her to work on that stop is I'll get her bent a little bit to the side. Right there, I'll bend her to the left with my left rein. And then I make contact with my right rein. And what that does, you saw her bringing her head back and forth, left and right. What that does, that kind of takes her leverage away. And even though she did move her head and fight with me, not want to stop. By doing it that way, I can get the stop. So here we're going to work on it again. Now I'm kind of tipping her head to the right. Well, I changed directions here. Now I'm tipping her head to the left. Bend her head and then add right rein and ask for the stop. That was a much better one.